The best title I ever came up with was clearly talking to Americans. And the reason why that worked was there was certainly nothing clever about it. But the minute Canadians heard that title, they knew exactly what was going to happen. <laughs> they knew there was going to be this intelligent exchange of ideas. And wherever I go, that's what people want to talk about. Doesn't matter what I do, they want to talk about the talking to Americans. And whenever the relationship between Canada and the United States gets a little bit strained, the more they want to talk about it. And let's face it, the relationship has been strained on and off over the last 10 years. I mean, between the gay marriage, the pot smoking, and the war in Iraq, it's a wonder George W. Bush doesn't have a great big deck of cards with all our faces on it. <laughs> but you know, I think we spend too much time worrying about that. As a nation, we spend too much time worrying about what the United States thinks about Canada. We have to stop thinking like that. We have to remember, we're bigger than they are and we're on top. <laughs> if we were in prison, they'd be our bitch. <laughs> I don't make up the rules, that's just the way it works. When talking to Americans, first premiered, it got 2.7 million viewers on the CBC. It beat the final game in the Stanley Cup playoffs that year. Obviously without a Canadian team in the series. <laughs> well, what's amazing about that, it's a perfect example of something that can be created out of nothing. Because it was a complete and utter fluke, it was my accident in the lab. And it happened on the worst day of my professional career. I was about two years into the business. And I convinced the producers, I went to them and I said, you know, this week, instead of going up to Parliament Hill and making an arse of myself, send me to Washington, D.C. And they said, well, you know, it's, uh, we don't know if it fits into the mandate of the show and it's, uh, it's expensive and plus it costs a lot of money. They were Scottish. <laughs> I don't usually buy into those stereotypes, but in this instance, it was absolutely true. So I had a good feeling about this, so I begged and they sent me. And I worked harder than anything I'd ever worked on before in my life. Had two or three different ideas lined up. I got there, every single one of them stunk. And the actor's nightmare came true. I was where I always wanted to be. I had a camera, I had a slot on television, and everything failed. I had absolutely nothing. And if I got back on that plane and I had nothing, I'd be sunk, it'd be over right then and there. So I was panicking, I thought my career was over. And at that very moment, this well-heeled, well-dressed gentleman with gray hair and an all-access Capitol Hill security pass walked by, and I said, for some reason, because I'm Canadian, I guess, I went, hi! And he stopped and said, hi, and then there was that awkward moment because we didn't know each other. And then he looked down, he saw the case that the, the CBC camera came in. Had the CBC logo on it. What we call the exploding arsehole. You know the one. <laughs> CBC management frowns on that term, by the way. <laughs> they prefer the multicultural pizza pie. Anyway, he looked down, he saw the arsehole underneath it said Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. And the guy said to me, he said, oh, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, huh? And I said, yeah. And he said, Canada. I said, yeah, Canada. He said, what are you doing way up here? <laughs> I said, well, um, I'm a newsman, you know, and uh, I'm a newsman. Remember, I was in a bad mood, career was over. Newsman, and, um, and I'm, up, I'm up here because, um, well, uh, the president of Canada is in town, uh, President Ralph Ben Murgy, <laughs> and he's got a summit with President Bill Clinton. And can you believe they still haven't figured out whether to call this thing the clinton ben Murgy Summit or the ben Murgy clinton Summit. And that's what I'm doing here. And he said, oh, I see. Oh, yeah, yeah. He said, well, um, I think it should be called the ben Murgy clinton Summit. And I said, really? Why, why is that now exactly? He said, well, in America, we're big believers in alphabetical order. Now remember, bad mood, career, to career over and everything. I said, um, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> he said, what? I said, you're, you're a big believer in, in what? He said, alphabetical order. I said, right, 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 right. How's that work exactly? <laughs> he 
he said, well, um, if something begins with A, goes before B, B goes before C, on and on down the alphabet. Ben Murgy begins with a B, Clinton begins with a C, Ben Murgy, Clinton, Summit, alphabetical order. And I said, oh, you know, I don't think we have that in Canada. <laughs> I said, would you mind if I did an interview with you about this alphabetical order thing? And suddenly he got all excited and straightened up his tie and he said, well, I guess I could help explain it to the Canadians. So then I looked at Pete, my cameraman, I gave him the international symbol for my career has been saved. <laughs> and next thing you know, I ran around interviewing people on subjects to which they knew absolutely nothing about. We came home, we put it on TV, we called it Talking to Americans. Next week, the producers came to me and they said, you're going to the United States. And so week after week, that's what I started doing. And week after week, it became more and more popular. And I have no idea why it became more popular, but I know this. I was utilizing the one skill they constantly told me in school would get me absolutely nowhere in life. And that is the ability to just completely bullshit someone. 